Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Rat's Nest where I get to use this fancy tool. We're going to go ahead and fix the bodywork, get it ready, go ahead and paint it. You know, I'm just ready for it to be done. Alright, so the first thing I got to do here is clean up my welding table. I was playing with this. This is my affordable bender. If you guys remember me bending the cage for the Samurai or bending my front bumper even for this Cherokee, I used my affordable bender, but that's the hand jack. I went ahead and got this Harbor Freight 12 ton air, air pneumatic jack, and that's gonna make this thing a lot easier for future cages that I'll be building here really, really soon. So before you wanna do any body work, you wanna pull off all the stuff that you get need to get out of the way. Ah, like that. And this. Pink. And these. We'll take this off too, but to do it, you also need the world's smallest torque bit set. And this. Other side too. And that. Also might want to break these off. <laughs> Dang it. 4.0. Knee tray. And you don't want these on there either. Get this. Come on. Get That's the worst part about it. Get these out. Okay. All right. So this is the dent tool that I got from Harbor Freight. Basically, all you do is you put the stud on the end, you put pressure against it, you push this button, and it welds the end of this little stud onto the metal, and then you can put a slide hammer on it to pull the metal out. Pretty simple setup. I practiced on that side. Let's go ahead and start here. Woo, got it. Ooh, sparks. All right, now this part's pretty simple. You literally just take this, slide it on over. You may have to wiggle that a little bit. Turn it where it's on the upside, pull, it's got tension on it, and then just like any other slide hammer, you pull the body out. And then if you just hold a little tension here, tap it down, and now it's loose. That easy. So I'm going to go ahead and do all these, try to get it as smooth as I can, and then uh, cut them off, grind them off, and then we'll see what we can do about the body ones. Alright, so you can see I definitely got these dents up. There's still a little bit of a divot here, so I'm gonna go ahead and put one stud there, and then probably one stud over here, and maybe one right there. That should get this thing pretty smooth. Okay, so one of the things I wanna do is I don't wanna pull the glass because that's just too much work. So I got these little quarter inch wood dowels, and what I'm gonna do is cut them into two inch lengths, and that way I can just shove them in here, and that'll kinda of hold the rubber up out of the way, the windowsill here, and that way I can get in here when I'm painting and paint it. All right, so I got that done. I got all my windows taped up. I got my doors taped up. I'm going to get back into sanding here now. So this is some 3M Brillo pads, basically. As you can see right here where the clear coat's fading and it's not shiny, but it's still polishy down here. I need to sand this so that it looks more like this, and that way I'm gonna have good adhesion when I go to paint it. If any of you say Robbie Layton does a better job, I'm gonna say, yeah, you're right, because I don't paint cars. I just paint rock crawlers. So I went through the whole Jeep using this Scotch-Brite pad, or a couple of these actually, other than the roof, I still gotta do the roof. Then I went in and just used basic glass cleaner and wiped it all down. Basically wiped up all the clear coat that I'm cutting off of it. Now I'm gonna come in here with this gloss remover. And that's really just gonna help get all of the grease and dirt and grime and anything else off of there before I start doing any mud work. So I got that on, it's drying right now. It's still a little damp. But I'm probably going to go ahead, it kind of left like a film, I think, whatever that stuff was I used. So I think I'm going to go ahead, sand it one more time, and then wipe it all down with that glass cleaner and get it nice and clean before I do this body filler on here. 
But it is nighttime, and I think I'm calling it a night here. So it's next morning. I sat here and sanded and sanded and sanded. And I finally said, forget it. And we're going to just get it off. So as you can see, I went ahead and hit it with a little bit of primer. And then I cleaned up the sections that I'm going to put the body filler on. And this is what I'm going to use. So this is a pourable glazing putty is what it is. And basically, uh, it's better than Bondo because if you're filling smalls, you want the Bondo for like big holes if you didn't pull your dents out. I pulled most of my dents out. All I want to do is just do this nice fine glaze and it doesn't leave pits, supposedly. I don't really know. I've never tried it, but I'm going to try it right now. There we go. Okay. Now what I was told is you do that and you put hardener about like that. That's it. What I was told. Let's find out. Told it should have a blue tint. I am not seeing a blue tint. I'm going to give it just a little bit more. All right, so I got my little spot here, obviously up here where I pulled the dents out, and then more sanding, and more sanding, a little more sanding, a little primer, more sanding, more primer, and then maybe we'll paint it. <laughs> okay, so it's been a couple hours. I let it dry. I got some 80 grit sandpaper on a little sanding block, and now I'm going to spend my next few hours doing that. So we'll see how nice I can make it. And then we'll see if I got to do it again. Hopefully not. Perfect. All right, guys, so it's a new day. I've been sanding and priming and sanding and priming, and now I got the Jeep where I want it. And it just takes time. Now it's time for me to paint it. Now, if you can see, you guys know, and just like most of you at home, I don't have a paint booth. So for me to paint a Jeep, I'm going to be just miserable. I don't have a way to ventilate it. I don't have a way to breathe through it. And I don't have a way to cover up all my stuff where it's just going to be disastrous. I also live in South Dakota, and like many of you, in the wintertime, it's just too cold to paint it outside. And I have a lot of wind. So I really can't do that. So what I'm going to do is I got this stuff. This is just a bed liner. Uh, it's called Custom Coat that I got off of Amazon or eBay or something like that. And it is a tentable bed liner so that I can make it the color I want, which is green. And I'm going to roll this on. It's actually a setup where you can roll it on. And because of that, I'll be able to breathe. I can do it in here and I won't make as big of a mess. Now what I am going to do though, uh, in the jams of everything, is I'm going to use this Duplicolor VHT engine enamel that I'm going to paint all around the door jams before I put on this bed liner, just so that everywhere that I can't get in there with a brush, I do have the same color. levels I know some of you guys are wondering well, why are you not painting it why are you going this route and this is exactly why I don't have a way to paint it you guys are gonna be in the same situation as me most of you that don't have a shop that just have a garage and I also want to use it at you know once again I'm using this as a road driver first off-road wheeler second and I really don't need it to be anything more than, than something that I can wheel. Like I just, I want it to be able to hold up. I want it to be able to hold up to, to trees and branches and scratches and all that other stuff. So be honest, have any of you guys ever done a roller paint job on a vehicle? This is definitely my first. I knew a hippie guy once that had a Volkswagen van and he used a paint roller to paint his hippie van, but that was just with regular like house paint. 
I don't think it held up too well. Okay, so I got my first coat on. I actually got my second coat on the roof because I had enough left over and with the hardener on, I didn't know if it was gonna harden on me or not. So I went ahead and did the second coat on the roof. I had two gallons to start. I got three quarts left and I still gotta do the sides again and I gotta do my hood and the top. So I went ahead and ordered a little bit more cause I'm not sure if I'm gonna have enough. Either way, I gotta call tonight on this one cause I gotta let this dry. Okay, so it's the next day I've let this stuff dry. It actually dries really nice and solid. The roof actually looks really good with that two coats on it. I think it's actually looking really nice. This, I still definitely need to put another coat on. If you look at it close, I don't know if you guys can see this in the camera, but you can see where it's a little bit lighter in color just from uh, not getting on there very well. So I'll definitely have to hit that with another coat. The biggest thing is just making sure like right here, I missed this little corner yesterday with the paintbrush. So I need to make sure I get into those little, these little corner spots. I'm also gonna wear a breather mask today because it was a little rough in here, even with the door open, uh, just because I don't wanna have a headache again. Okay, so I got all the tape off. Uh, some of it was easier than others to get off. It, usually you want that line tape where you can pull that little metal line out of there and it pulls it pretty good, but everything came off pretty easy. It wasn't too awful hard. I still got to do the hood, still got to do the bezel. So unfortunately I was waiting on a hood from Omics Ada and they discontinued it. So I had to find one at the salvage yard, but I got it so we can work on that next. So if you guys have been a fan of the channel for a while, then you know about Napier Precision Products. They make what I think is probably one of the best hood scoops for your hood or hood breathers, however you want to call it. Because as you can see, it has airflow in it, but it's not open and it actually has a lip up. So if it rains on this thing, it isn't going to run water down into my engine bay, which is actually kind of nice. Um, all the other ones I've ever seen are open holes and then all that all that water, all that dirt, all that grime, snow, whatever it is, goes right down in there. Well, this will keep it from actually falling down in there. Now I just gotta find the sweet spot that I want to mount. So I went ahead and marked out the inside. I'm gonna cut that out. I'm gonna leave the outside where it screws on, and it's gonna be that simple. The one thing I wanna make sure is that I don't cut through the cross bracing that's underneath this for the hood that actually keeps the hood from folding on itself. Everybody remembers the old square bodies that went like this. We don't want that to happen. So I'm not gonna cut the cross bracing, I'm just cutting the top part of the hood off. All right guys, so it's day something, I don't know, but I went ahead and painted the bottom, let it dry last night, and then I sanded the top and it's ready to go. Uh, but I did have to take a little break. If you guys remember this, Matt and I are both going to the record games. I have a silver ticket, he has a silver ticket. We're gonna be judges for it. And one of the things you guys may recall, if you guys watched our Chasing Colorado's Toughest Trails, I had to get a winch from Matt. And we were able to go over to our buddy Matt's off-road recovery, stole one of his Badland winches, from the wrecker. Well, what we didn't know was that winch actually was one of the winches that Harbor Freight made specially for the wrecker. So the control box for it is specific to that switch panel that they got. So I have to go out and cut mine apart. So Harbor Freight sent me a regular switch. I had to cut mine out so that I can send it down to Matt that's customized for the wrecker. I had to take this cover off. I got to take these nuts off and then I can take this piece off and then I can get to this fancy unit. I got the power, Matt. What are you going to do? <laughs> one neat thing is when you get one of these winches, if you ever lose the controller or you change out the, or you, or you end up having to change out the receiver, 
you can actually program this controller back to this winch without having to use that dongle. What you gotta do is, is turn your winch to a free spool, turn your winch on, then you have to hold the on button for three seconds. Once the light starts flashing, hold the in. Okay, it stopped flashing, let go. Once you just gotta do it again, you push both of them at the same time this time. Right there. So that's why you want it in free spool, because now when it's sucking in and out, Bam, I got a winch that works and I didn't have to put a new dongle on there. Plus now I can put that winch controller back in the Jeep and now I got a free Pelican case, win. So I'm running into town to mail this off to Matt's Off-Road Recovery, that way they can use that winch. Uh, in other news, I do have a JK now, I did buy this JK. I didn't know if I really wanted to show it or not. Um, I mean, you can see here it has 130, 136,000 miles on it. I didn't know if I wanted to show it or not. I got a smoking deal on it. I got it for 6,500 bucks. Reason why is because the gas tank skid was absolutely roached along with the exhaust manifolds were leaking. So they thought that it had a knocking motor and that the frame was rotten and that wasn't the case. It was just a gas tank skid. I don't know why nobody else makes a replacement gas tank skid that actually covers the entire tank when that one goes bad. Everybody just makes one that bolts into your stock skid plate. Uh, if the stock skid plate's roached like mine was, it was it, it's bad. Um, either way, I didn't know if I wanted to show this or not because I want to drive it around and it's probably not going to get touched. I do want to build it, but it's probably not going to get touched until 2024 uh, for actual wheel, like building to wheel. So uh, I hope that doesn't hold anybody back but I will be building the JK in probably 2024. Uh, hopefully we'll see you guys down there in March. Make sure you go to mattsoffroadadventures.com and get signed up because we are gonna have a t-shirt. It's a once a once only t-shirt for this event. We're only gonna have a hundred of them. Once they're gone, they're gone. All right, we got the second coat on. It's a little bit light though, so I'm still waiting on that, uh, the rest of that stuff that I ordered to come in. Uh, I'm out, I used all two gallons. So if you're gonna do this and you want it to actually be thick and actually be on there good, you're probably gonna want just a little bit more than two gallons. Get two gallons and then get two more quarts or something like that. These are the original screws that hold your original ladder rack or roof rack, or whatever you wanna call it on, luggage rack. And I don't want it. I don't want to have that back on here because eventually I think I want to put something on this uh, on this roof that's you know just a flat a flat top piece. You know maybe something like JCR has or something like that. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put in these little stainless screws. I got these from the hardware store, and I can just thread them in in place of those screws. I will go ahead and put some silicone on them though before I put them in. And that way, they should be sealed up, good to go. Put this stuff back together. Now I did end up getting some paint and stuff on this bulb. Um, I don't know about you guys, but every time I go to the salvage yard or anything else, or I have an old car that I'm getting ready to take to the scrap yard, I pull all the good bulbs, all the good fuses. Now I didn't have to go into town to get a bulb. Also, when you're doing this, you may want to tape off this part here. Um, I'm gonna have to scratch all that. I'm gonna have to scratch all this off now because I messed up and got a little carried away with the roller. You don't know how much you can use some help unless you don't have it. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna have to try to finagle this hood on here by myself. I got it off by myself, but I didn't really care about scratching it at that point. So, we'll see how it goes. If I got help from an alligator, would he be a Gatorade? I don't know. Okay, after a lot of adjustment, I got the hood the way I wanted. I did go ahead and space the back a little bit. I know some people like this, some people don't. I just want to get as much flow, airflow out of this thing as I can and just let the motor breathe as much as possible. Welcome to Colt's Fender Flare paint booth where I'm going to use the rest of the Herculiner that I used 
because I had two gallons of this to do the inside of that Cherokee a long time ago, I'm going to use what I have left, which is about half a gallon here, and go ahead and do these fender flares with it. There it is, my friends. We have the Ultimate Rhino Guarded Fender Flares. Toughest plastic on the market. Ding. <laughs>